Hi there and welcome to another episode at Station Road. Now this is a real episode and not just an update to say that I can't do another episode. So finally and although another week has passed I have managed to get some weathering done on some of this Metcalf structures and so forth that were built around the hill section and the fiddle yards. So going back to the various different phases I've been through for the hillside, the church scene and the fiddle yard, it was completely reconstructed in the end and then it came down to a process of working up the actual infrastructure elements, for example the retaining walls, fences around the church and other retaining wall sections, particularly on the roadside and things like that. And once that was all in place, and that was where I think we left off in the last video, the next phase really was to get the weathering done for all of these components, which is essentially, yes, the retaining walls and any other types of man-made structures. After that, then it would be a case of getting into the scenic materials, for example, foliage, trees, grass, and all of that type of material. So in this video we are simply tackling the weathering side of the infrastructure and the processes I use to actually go through that. So there's actually quite a lot of weathering that took place because there is actually quite a large amount of man-made infrastructure around this particular area of the layout. So I think without further ado let's just get into this and see how it goes. So in order to get all these components weathered up I've essentially set up this area on a portable table. This is going to be easier to access all this stuff from here rather than on the layout where I could be potentially reaching over things and breaking stuff and so forth. So the other benefit too of course by weathering it here is I can temporarily sort of position some stuff together for example this retaining wall so we can then actually weather around the corner and do the tunnel portal at the same time which will give us a nice even weathering so as you can see I've kind of set the hill up on a bit of a platform here so that I can sort of position all of these components and of course we've got these lower retaining walls to weather there is now an added little piece here which is actually part of the hill formation which needs weathering so the idea is that we'll get a uniformed kind of look in terms of the weathering across all of these different areas so I have to move things around a bit obviously as I continue with the weathering because you know we have the overhead bridge here we have to position that up there which will mean I'll move the hill we've also got some other bits of lower retaining wall section here there is also another length of this as well so in terms of weathering powders i have put up videos before i think showing how i've gone about doing this so i guess in a way really this is more of a kind of a, a recap but the weathering powders i've just got a couple of containers of different tones that sort of work quite well with these metcalf kits and they're just simply ground up from soft pastels or chalk pastels as some may know them and this particular brand and set which is earth tones is actually really good because it pretty much means I can use the entire set because you go through from the the black to browns and so forth and then you actually get into a few kind of, kind of rust colors and so forth and then also actually up at this end as well probably the only one I wouldn't actually use out of this is possibly these two here they're probably possibly a little bit too bright but yeah it's it's a great set and for thirteen dollars you're gonna make a huge saving rather than buying individual modeling weathering powders so we also have our soft bristle brushes here and these have actually been well used now they're starting to get a little bit flared out but 
they still do the job quite nicely. So I think what we'll do is we'll just sort of start with certain areas and slowly work our way around and as we get to adjoining pieces, for example in here, we will have to position this in place and likewise for other areas as well. So we'll get into it and see how it goes. So before we actually start on the main structures, I've just got a spare bit of this gritstone Metcalf texture because I really sort of wanted to test this just to see what sort of tones might work best and I'm kind of thinking near the bottom of the retaining walls and tunnel portal and so forth this would be possibly a sort of brownish rusty kind of tone which would be basically from track and ballast dust and things like that and then maybe further up at the top of the retaining walls and so forth we would have more of a, a soot or sort of black tones so that's my initial sort of thought so we'll just see how that goes and see how it looks because interestingly I haven't actually done any of this powder weathering on this particular Metcalf texture uh, it works very well on of course the red brick textures but I haven't actually done anything with this so it'll be interesting to see how it actually comes out Now some of the other things too that I'll just actually point out, a piece of paper underneath is great because any spill off you can just pick this bit of paper up and tip it back into the pot and also I do have an eraser here because that can be quite handy just to sort of resist or, or take back some of the powders and can also create sort of a streaking effect too as well so we have one of those. Now I'm actually working my way from the bottom heading up because I kind of I want the powders obviously at the bottom or the texture at the bottom to be a lot heavier and it sort of fades out as it goes up and then tapping it of course as well to get any excess off so we're sort of just working our way up the the wall and I just simply do it as single strokes that just go up in vertical lines because in that way you also sort of get a little bit of a streaking effect as well as if rainwater and other conditions have run streaks down the wall. So even from that simple little bit of weathering there you get quite a significant change in the material so that was the darker brown I'm actually going to try the lighter one in this other corner just to see how that looks yeah in some respects actually I'm kind of preferring maybe the lighter brown but then what I might actually do is lighter brown sort of the majority of the lower section of the wall and then maybe some of this darker brown is actually just at the very very bottom just to create a heavier tone which would essentially be where the tracks are and the, you're obviously going to get a lot more build up towards the bottom of the wall So yeah I'm actually kind of liking that, so that would actually be the lighter brown sort of generally sort of kind of going up and then some of the darker brown at the very very bottom. So the other tone that I'm considering using which would be something that runs from the top of the walls 
and the tunnel portals and so forth and that is this essentially black powder so that's really representing things like soot and diesel smoke things like that and that's just very gently sort of worked in from the top of the wall this is going to be particularly good where the arches are in the retaining wall because that will give the arches even more depth so that it sort of looks like and, and obviously you, you get build up in the crevices and up under the arches anyway within railway infrastructure so So we're sort of ending up with that kind of effect there. It's 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 looking reasonably okay. Uh, probably gone a bit too far, or I might use a finer brush up at the top end. We can also actually run the, an eraser through here, so we sort of get uh, streaks in it. And I'm only doing this very lightly because I, you don't want to sort of wear through the actual. Metcalf material that's in there as well so that sort of gives you you know some level of streaking that's also going on there as well and I may actually do some areas possibly where you might have things like moss and that type of thing and that would be in a sort of a greenish tone and I may do that with a colouring in pencil as opposed to powders so I'm quite sort of happy sort of proceeding with that sort of approach for these retaining walls so we'll get into the actual material itself you always sort of feel a little bit nervous obviously when you sort of move from the, from just mucking around with a piece of card to actually working on the components that you've spent hours making but it's sort of crossing over that nervous threshold
So I've now completed all the weathering, all the individual components, and that is the retaining wall sections. And then we have the lower retaining wall which runs along the other side of the fiddle yard. And this of course is the hill section with the wall sections now weathered up as well. These areas I've done a little bit sort of lighter. I certainly haven't used any of the black weathering powder on these areas. We have the overhead bridge here. And then we have some tunnel portals as well. So the next step now is to actually lock all this weathering powder in. And I do this simply by using a very matte finish spray lacquer or varnish. And previously I did used to use the testers lacquer and it was absolutely fantastic. It gave a beautiful matte finish and you didn't get that ghosting or foggy effect that sometimes you get with cheaper paints. Unfortunately here in New Zealand you just can't get this stuff any longer so I don't know what the story is but it's just not possible to be able to even find this stuff any longer. So I've switched to the Citadel Monitorium Varnish and it is probably just as good possibly could even be better it gives a beautiful matte finish and doesn't seem to be prone to the fogging or ghosty sort of effect once again this is actually also quite tricky to find but it's at least not completely impossible to get hold of this stuff here in New Zealand so we're going to go ahead and spray all these components and then once that's all done we can put them back into situ and see how it goes.
So I've now got the weathered components all back in place on the layout and it's certainly made a bit of a transformation from just the bare Metcalf material and I think it's taking shape now and certainly does look the part. So once we get some scenic materials, grass and ballast and all those other bits and pieces, I think that's certainly going to bring this particular area of the layout to life. So the retaining wall for the road side is certainly looking a lot better now. And the tunnel portal as well, with a few faint soot marks to indicate steam or even diesel. And then of course we have the overhead bridge. I've still got a little bit more work to do on the overhead bridge in terms of weathering and sort of giving it a bit more rust and things like that. So I've got a few trains running at the moment, a class 25 I believe and a class 24. I can never actually figure out which ones are which sometimes uh, but either way the 24s and 25s are one of my favourite classes of locomotive so I have a few of them now actually that I've added to my collection so if we come down to this end we also have the other tunnel portal all nicely weathered up as well and if we just head over to behind here it might be a bit difficult to pick up but we also have the weathering on this side which traditionally I'd imagine would be quite grimy right next to three tracks and looking at the weathering on the stone wall and the retaining wall for the road from this angle as well and the retaining walls running the full length of the scenic fiddle yard and here on the other side of the church and the hillside we have the retaining walls that run around the back of the layout there which are all now weathered up as well including the church walls as well and yeah uh, I think that's sort of all come together quite nicely So there we have it, we now have all the weathering components done for the man-made infrastructure and the next phase and I am hoping this is not another two months away and that I can actually start work on this a bit sooner or hopefully maybe a lot sooner is the actual scenic material so we're talking static grass, flock, trees all of that type of material we can actually start working on. So hopefully we'll be able to get onto those types of scenic treatments very soon. So I'll leave it there for now. I will just like to say thank you very much for everyone who subscribed, all the people who have submitted comments on my videos. I know there are some unanswered comments in there that I really need to get to. I do apologize for that. I will get to those and I guess Thank you all very much for your patience while I'm going through this very super busy period in my life where I just never seem to have enough hours in the day at the moment. So take care everyone, do look after yourselves and I will catch you next time. Bye for now.